Was the pass rush really as deficient as we maybe think? Plus, let's take another look at those two interceptions Mordecai threw and the Badgers using the tight ends in unique ways. We're going to talk about all of that on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, your team every single day. Today's episode brought to you by the great sponsors over at Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash college and the promo code Lockdown College for a free water bottle with any purchase. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off, we promise you. All right, so we're going to be doing a new segment on Lockdown Badgers. It's called Empty the, the Notebook, where we go back, we watch the game again, we take notes, we track specific things. And today's show, I wanted to specifically look at that pass rush or lack thereof, depending on your uh, your viewpoint. I wanted to look at Tanner's two interceptions, plus some unique ways they're using new players in the long go offense. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I'll also take a couple of your questions, depending on how long the show goes. I want to start here. Uh, with empty the notebook, I want to talk about the pass rush, right? We we talked about it a little bit on the show, certainly going back and really watching the game, watching passing plays multiple times gives you a little better perspective. So I tracked every, to the best of my ability, uh, tracked every pass play Washington State had, or not, geez, not Washington State, I'm getting ahead of myself, that's next week. Every pass play Buffalo had, right? I clocked them. Uh, I have 38 throws that I tracked. There's a couple throws I didn't track for pressure because they were screen passes by Buffalo. And clearly those are, if you know, screen passes, the offensive line lets pressure in. Those, you know, those plays are designed to create pressure for the quarterback so you can throw behind the defense lineman. But I have 38 um, passing situations from Buffalo tracked. On average, Buffalo's quarterback, um, 2.15 seconds from kind of snap to throw across those 38 passes, 2.15 seconds. So that's fast, right? Uh, there is credence to the, the idea that Buffalo decided we're going to be quick. We're going to get the ball out. We're going to try to get the, our, our playmakers in space, and we're not going to allow the Wisconsin pass rush to get home, which is going to put us in second and long, third and unmanageable. So there's truth there, right? 38 passes, average roughly 2.15 seconds uh, from snap to throw. On those 38 passes, I have 12 pressures. I, I went back and I looked at 12 pressures. I know officially um, by media they had five or six. Uh, I have Pro Football Focus. I have a subscription there. They have, I think, 15. I'm somewhere in the middle looking at it. I have 12. There, listen, when you start to watch a game, you can understand why different people have different numbers for pressures, right? What is a pressure? If a quarterback holds the ball for three and a half seconds and eventually the pocket collapses and he gets pressured and he has to throw it away, is that a pressure? Uh, I don't really think so after three and a half seconds. Eventually, a pass rusher is going to get through an offensive line, right, if you give them long enough. So I track pressures as um, things that happen with under three seconds for sure um, and, and defensive players getting into the quarterback, forcing a play, forcing a scramble, hitting the quarterback. So honestly, 12 pressures out of 38 dropbacks when they're getting rid of the ball quickly is not too bad, right? Um, a couple things I noticed – that are interesting to me. Muma Nanjameda, they, they blitzed him and Turner quite a bit. Muma functions really well as a battering ram in this game. Uh, several times, uh, nice delayed blitz. Running back is forced to step up, pick him up, and a running back can't handle Muma. Muma went right through him a couple times to create easy pressures. So that was nice to see. Um, not a lot of nuance in his game, Numuma. When you watch it, it, it's a lot of just I'm a bigger, stronger athlete than you, which is where the running back stepping up to pick him up on blitz protection gets into issues. I think he's going to struggle a little bit more this year with the offensive lineman. I don't think he has kind of the nuance of a pass rusher. Um, another one that worked pretty well, Jordan Turner, coming on uh, pass rushing blitzes with him, just him alone or Cheney uh, kind of in tandem. Turner times up his blitzes really well. That, that was a, a really nice aspect to this game for Jordan Turner. He had four pressures. I have him down four um, that are either him specifically or him in tandem with Cheney coming in on a blitz. He times it really well. He's pretty explosive. He gets low. He's able to create an angle on an offensive lineman and kind of slide through to create some pressure. So out of the 12 pressures that we had, and again, I'm not counting late pressures. There's a couple plays, like I have one where, you know, they were holding the ball for 3.48 seconds and then a pressure came. That's that's too long. I'm not giving the defense credit for a pressure of three and a half seconds into the play. There's another one at 3.43 seconds. But for the pressures where I really feel like it came pretty quick, it impacted the play, Turner had four of those. That's 33%. Uh, that's pretty good. Now, we again, we got to get home. I think we lack a little bit of that juice at the end, but that was pretty good. To me, uh, Peterson, that's the guy, if you watch, 
he has the most nuance as a pass rusher. He's got a spin move um, that he almost got home with where he kind of set up an offensive tackle to the inside, spun to the outside, had a clean release. But again, they were just getting rid of the ball, Cole Snyder, really quickly. Um, Peterson also had a really nice instant pressure down and towards in the fourth quarter, 1.56 seconds. Peterson had a really nice swim move on a tight end, and in 1.56 seconds, he was pressuring the quarterback. And again, later in the game, come off the edge at 2.21 seconds, uh, Peterson had a really nice just kind of rip through move where he batted the offensive lineman's hands down to me he showed nuance peterson showed a bull rush he showed a swim move he showed um a bit of a violent hands where he's able to knock down the offensive lineman's hands and get her onto the outside shoulder he's the guy coming out of this game like again turner can time up blitzes really well i think he's going to struggle if he doesn't if he if he's squared up against a blocker muma can get through a running back i think peterson is the guy who is most likely on this team to win against an offensive tackle. He's the most likely guy that we can line up against somebody and say, we need you to create a pressure where we don't need to scheme something up necessarily. Peterson's the one guy I would look at, and we didn't see Varner in this game, but Peterson's the one guy I would look at and say, he can win against a blocker because he has some different different attacking moves. You can tell he's put work in. I, I think he is not, there's a tiny bit of twitch missing from his game. But I think he can do something. Uh, so, the other, so from the defensive line standpoint, I thought James Thompson showed great effort. He had a, a bull rush that created pressure. He had another one where he split a double team. But it's kind of just that, right? There's not a lot else to his pass rushing game that I saw. Again, it's week one, but it's also Buffalo. The offensive lines will get better than Buffalo. So uh, I came out of this feeling a little better about the pass rush but not good enough where I don't have the it's time to panic button still on my desk, right? I still think it's going to be a bit of an issue. They're going to have to scheme up pressures, but it is true. Listen, uh, people said, Hey, they got rid of the ball quickly. Some said that's an excuse. Uh, they did get rid of the ball quickly. Uh, they being Buffalo. I thought Peterson looked better on a rewatch than I initially thought. And I thought Turner timed up his blitzes really well. I didn't see a ton of juice from the defense line in the pass rush. So that's where I'm at from the pass rush uh, watching it again. Uh, I wanted to, let's talk about the two picks from Mordecai. So just a few interesting things. The first one, um, you know, I don't know. I was going to try to figure out which, if they were both kind of equally bad or whatnot. The first one, you had a three man rush underneath coverage was pretty good. Um, when I was watching that play, one of the reasons we were excited about Tanner Mordecai is the legs, right? And to me, it felt like that was a play he had a lot of time. He probably could have scrambled for that first down instead of forcing it. Uh, Buffalo played heavy coverage. They dropped eight. They really blanketed everything. We don't have the all 22, which is the kind of um, field view of the the, so of the of the the game where you can see all the routes developing, see all the route trees. So we kind of just have to go off what we have on the TV angle. But there was a play to be made there um, to the tight end. Mordecai threw it late. Uh, a nice throw with a little more anticipation. That, uh, Wisconsin ran two crossers. I think Skylar Bell coming from the right to the left and then uh, Ashcraft coming from the left to the right. There was a window there for Mordecai to hit Ashcraft for the first down, but I also just think he could have tucked it and ran for the first down. And that's, I think he's going to need to do more of that, right? Use his legs as a weapon on third down. So that was the first pick. The second one, and this is something that people talked about with Mordecai, is you might be able to confuse him a little bit, right? From a decision-making standpoint, Buffalo lined up eight at the line of scrimmage. So it was uh, the second pick. Let's see, it was uh, eight on line of scrimmage. They dropped three into coverage right away, so they ended up rushing five. This was a poor job by the offensive line. Uh, Jake uh, Nelson did not pick up uh, his, his outside assignment very well. There was two free rushers. They rushed five and had two free rushers, and that's with having Braylon Allen in the backfield. So the offensive line failed here with a blitz pickup, and it looked like Tanner Mordecai was just a little skittish with his read. Uh, so uh, this, this pick, the second pick to me, is an offensive line slash quarterback thing. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, Tanner just has to eat that. You can't throw that pick in that situation. Uh, so you have one where I felt like Tanner could have used his legs. I wonder if they'll go back and kind of and point that out to him. And the second one, the offensive line, Jack Bicknell, they need to do a better job on blitz pickup. They were a little confused. They allowed two free two free runners. But then if you're a veteran quarterback and those free runners are there, you just got to throw the ball away. You can't make that mistake. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about a unique way. Uh, they were using the tight ends in this game. I'm, I'm, I was pretty excited to see it. We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers, but first a quick break for our friends of the show, uh, our wonderful friends of the show over at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs is the best and most comfortable 
clothes, shorts, hats that you can wear, khaki shorts designed to fit, slimmer through the through the thigh and the leg. Um, and he, had, he sent me this free hat, uh, which is incredible with a purchase I made. You're never going to want to take your bird dogs off. And they allow me to be comfortable. Like comfort is my number one thing. And my bird dogs allow me to be comfortable, to dress like a normal functioning human where I don't get confused as a homeless guy anymore. I've talked about this story where I got confused as a homeless person because I don't really know how to dress myself that well. Uh, bird dogs are, are what I used to go out into the world where I can still have my comfort. I can look great. I can feel great. And I can use them in any function. It takes all the brain power out of dressing myself, right? I can go to the to the basketball courts with my bird dogs. I can do my podcast with my bird dogs. I can go to the library with my bird dogs. I can go and press socialites with my bird dogs, but also take it down to the lake with a can of lineys. All with my bird dogs. They are incredible, functional for any occasion. And again, uh, this hat is incredibly light, comfortable. That's a bird dog's uh, piece of attire as well. You will never want to take them off. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on badgers, enter code locked on badgers at checkout, locked on college at checkout uh, for a free, sorry, locked on college at checkout for a free uh, bird dog's water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free water bottle at checkout. You will not want to take your bird dogs off, I promise you. I do want to say again, thank you to everybody tuning in. Really do appreciate it. All the listeners that have tuned in as the season got started, y'all are amazing on Wisconsin, and let's keep this going. All right. I want to talk now about uh, some fun ways they're starting to use the tight ends. And this was one of the big questions with Longo, right? No more fullbacks. Uh, how are you going to use the tight ends? Well, so one of the first things that that I notice is they're really using their tight ends, Rucci and Ashcraft, in kind of a jumbo slot where, where they're going to take him. They're going to spread out the defense with the spacing, right? They'll go three, three like trips to the right, uh, one receiver to the left, but then they're going to put the tight end in that trips formation, which gives them a ton of flexibility. A, it forces defenses to either put a bigger linebacker out in space, you know, to guard this bigger tight end or a bigger safety, which takes them out of the box, which opens up Braylon Allen, Ches Malusi, or they're going to put a smaller guy out there. And you can see what Phil Longo is doing with this is they'll throw some design passes out there and then use Rucci or Ashcraft from that slot position as a lead blocker, which I thought was really interesting, right? A couple of the passes to Braylon Allen that we've talked about, everyone said, man, a lot of checkdowns. A couple of those were designed passes to Braylon Allen. They weren't checkdowns that came as a result of a progression that Tanner Mordecai was going through and he settled on a checkdown. It was a design play to go to Braylon Allen in the slot. And then you have a guy like Hayden Rucci out there in the flat as a lead blocker. Um, really interesting stuff. And uh, speaking of Hayden Rucci, really, really great game from a blocking standpoint. He is incredible in space. I didn't see one missed block from Rucci. I didn't watch every every rep he had, but I did try to hone in on the reps he had in space blocking from that slot position. He was incredible. He, he is a great plus, plus, A plus blocker from that spot. In space, he can take on a defensive back and wipe him out. Also great in the box. They use him several times um, to, to lead power plays, right? They'll have him leading across the formation. He's a great blocker. And we've already known this, but you go back and you watch the film, and he he moves people from point A to point B, and he takes pride in it. You can tell it matters to him. And the Badgers have a lot of confidence in that. So that's a really interesting aspect of this spread, this dairy aid, dairy raid offense that Longo has, is they're going to use those tight ends as lead blockers out in space, but do it in unique ways. Um, they did it with Ashcraft as well, which I thought was interesting. They had Ashcraft in on the second possession of the game, using him as a lead blocker in a running situation. That's a lot of confidence in a true freshman. Uh, I was interested to see how quickly they went to him and how often they used him, even as a point of attack blocker. Another thing that was interesting to me, they would line up Rucci or Ashcraft tight, shotgun to Mordecai, passing situation, and then they would just bring uh, Rucci or Ashcraft underneath. Uh, Mordecai in the pocket and use him kind of as a personal protector, kind of like you would see with the punting situation. I thought that was kind of an interesting way to use both of these tight ends. And then in the red zone, you there's been so many questions with Longo in the red zone. How is he going to attack that short field situation? We saw some two tight end situations. Um, we saw a two tight end situation in the first red zone trip, second and goal from the six. Ashcraft on the left, I think Rucci on the right. They ran power to the right behind Rucci. Ashcraft pulled over. Again, so it looks like in the red zone, that's a formation they're going to be able to go to with those two big tight ends of Ashcraft and Rucci, both of whom Ru Rucci is, again, he was incredibly impressive on the rewatch from a blocking standpoint. And then Ashcraft, a true freshman shouldn't be this good this early. I, he's he's not the super high ceiling guy, but he can play. He can play. He can really play. You watch that film and 
he he didn't miss blocks. Now he doesn't get the drive that Ruchi has. Ruchi's a little more physical at this point, which makes sense with his his years in college. But Ashcraft in a couple years with Brady Collins, he's going to be Ruchi with more receiving ability. He's he's a potential star, in my opinion. Um let's keep going here. Um another one we talked a lot about. Okay, we talked a lot about the lack of deep shots. So going back on the rewatch, there were opportunities. There was a second and nine on the second drive. I believe the second drive of the game. Um, first quarter, they went mass protect. They released three. Uh, it was Chimre, Bryson Green, and then Will Pauling. Uh, Chimre, DK, and Bryson Green ran deep verts, and it was just covered. So they ended up taking kind of a comeback route to Pauling for a first down. So there were shots there. They went max protect, and it looked like they wanted a shot. And then um, Buffalo covered it up pretty well. I think Buffalo played, played pretty conservatively with their safeties. And Mordecai went underneath the Pauling for a first down there. Um, a couple a couple nice blocks in the on the outside. Again, talking receivers now. DK had a couple really nice ones. Bryson Green's a good blocker. Skyler Bell blocked well. Uh, a guy I highlighted blocking on the edges, Will Pauling is feisty. He had a pancake block. Uh, he's really good. There were a couple plays they threw it out there in um, getting that smoke screen or that swing pass to Braylon Allen. Again, that swing pass to Braylon Allen is scripted at times. They'll throw it behind the trips formation to Braylon Allen, and then all three of those players are already releasing the block. One of them's a tight end, but one of them is Pauling. And Pauling holds his own out there because he really gets after it. He's not the biggest receiver, but he stays pretty engaged as a blocker. And again, he had a pancake out there on a cornerback. So I was very impressed with Will Pong, not just from a receiving standpoint, from a blocking standpoint on the rewatch. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up with those swing passes to Allen, I know people have talked about, it, you know, maybe not the most impressive part of the offense, but he almost never gets taken down by the first tackler. And it's just another way to get him in space. Braylon Allen broke so many tackles today. On that 39, was it 39-yard run in the third quarter? Um, I counted six guys that had, had had to play some part in bringing him down. When he's in open field, and it really you can see it in this game, he's terrifying. He's a force of nature. He's a, a Category 5 hurricane in the open field. And you just don't want to mess with him. You want to evacuate. You want to find high grounds. You want to you want to escape and survive another day if you're a safety or cornerback. And that's he, he made life really difficult on Buffalo's defensive backs coming up to try to tackle. Um, he made it life difficult on Buffalo's linebackers coming up to tackle. So I think those swing passes, those, those kind of screen plays, those design swing passes to Braylon, it's a way to get him just in space, right? Because he is very difficult to deal with at this point. Um, talking again about the defensive line, it was nice to see Curtis Neal get some reps. Curtis Neal, the, the – Retro freshman came with a lot of hype last year. Good to see him get some reps. I don't think he looked like he had the 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 juice that he he had as a recruit. I think he might still be working off some rust. Uh, but it was nice to see him get out there for sure. James Thompson again, really great effort on a couple of ways to generate pressure. But it's really just a bull rush right now. Um, there was a I want to talk a little about Hunter Wohler and the way they're using him. Hunter Wohler is going to be a massive problem this year. Uh, for defenses as he gets to the line of scrimmage. They used him all over the field, uh, broke up a, a really contributed to a third and one stop where he's able to dive in there. He's also, he's the eliminator. Like you go back and you watch film. We talked a lot about Kamoy Latou's missed tackles. Man, there's some Mua missed tackles. There's a Jordan Turner miss where he runs right by, um, I forget the quarterback's name. I just had it, but he runs right by the Buffalo quarterback. There are some really bad misses. Mordic, our uh, Matry had another miss that was pretty bad. Hunter Wohler doesn't really have misses. He came up in the flat and took down uh, Buffalo's running back on a third, second and short to, to bring up a third and one. He uh, cleaned up on a couple other misses that other defenders had. Hunter Wohler had a great game, and watching him back on film just reinforced that. A couple more things that stood, it, stood out to me watching the film. Mordecai twice stood in there and delivered really nice shots while getting hit or, or with pressure in his face. The DK one was one of those. There was another one um, in the second half where he threw to Tucker Ashcraft. The big Tucker Ashcraft grabbed on the sideline. He was getting hit on that. He planted the back foot, delivered it. To me, that is, that's really impressive. Like you want a quarterback who's going to stand in there, take the hit and deliver the ball. Mordecai did that twice in this game. I think that is something to build off going forward. And then the other, I wanted to point out, because people push back on this. There was a play early in the second quarter where Tanner Mordecai was scrambling. He was third and short, right? Third and, oh, it was like third and six or third and seven. He slid early, right, so he didn't get the first down. He probably could have got it if he dove. I'm not even saying probably. He could have got it if he dove head first. Again, I want him to take care of his body. I know people pushed back and said 
somebody pushed back and said, no, that's that's ridiculous. You need him to go for the first down. No, you don't. Not in game one, week one against Buffalo. I'm sorry, you don't need him to go for the first. Not if it's going to get him hit. Okay, because who do you have at backup quarterback that has any experience? Nobody. That's the answer, right? Nobody. He does not need to take an unnecessary shot against Buffalo in week one. We weren't going to lose this game. I, at no point do I want him taking unnecessary shots. Every shot is a big deal. And I'll go back to another play uh, in a game that Phil Longo called. Uh, quarterback draw, it was third and four. I don't I don't like that call for much the same reason. Don't put Mordecai in harm's, in, in harm's way. You have Ches Malusi and Braylon Allen who are running all over Buffalo. You have Will Pauling as your slot receiver. That's why you have him for third and four. I don't like the idea of a quarterback draw almost ever in this in this unless you really feel like you need it. it like it's a big time game and it's a moment where you think you could rip something off. You don't need it against Buffalo. I, I didn't like that call because I don't want my quarterback taking any unnecessary hits. And with honestly, first of all, the play didn't work, but I, I wouldn't have liked it even if it did. What do you feel better about in that situation? Giving the ball to Braylon slash Chez or a quarterback draw with Mordecai? I mean, I'm, at that point, I'm just going to take my chances with Braylon or Chez anyway. I don't care that if Buffalo knows it's coming. So I didn't like that call. I didn't like the punt uh, from fourth on uh, fourth and three uh, from the 42 yard line in the second quarter either. Um, so, all right, we're going to take a quick break, come back with some of your questions, including um, what what someone said is the weakness of this show. We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. It is NFL season, and FanDuel is an incredible offer for all you NFL fans. Again, from America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can be on everything. Spreads to futures. We've talked about the futures on FanDuel on this show. The futures are great. Uh, we've, there's Wisconsin-themed ones, which now some people might not be as bullish about, but FanDuel has it all. Parlay, spreads, futures. Uh, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right. Welcome back to the show. We are going to throw some of your comments up. This one is from uh, Randy Athens. He says, why aren't any of you at the game? First game of the new era and you're watching on TV. Probably the biggest weakness of the show. Uh, Randy, thank you for, for chiming in. Um, I'm in Connecticut, right? Uh, Rajiv is in Las Vegas, and he was actually in Japan for this one. Um, but Justin, Justin should have been there. No, I don't know. Listen, it's sometimes it's hard to get to a game. Like logistics are tough. People have families. People have budgets. Uh, you know, it's difficult if you don't live in Madison to get to every game. So you have to pick and choose. I don't know if that's the weakness of this show. Uh, you know, I could probably point to myself as, as a bigger weakness than that. We are going to get to some, though. I definitely need to do a better job of getting the pulse of the stadium. Uh, there's something in the back of my head I want to try for next week's game. But, um, yeah, I don't know if that's – again, if you're talking weakness of the show, you probably can point right here. I don't think that is the weakness. Um, let's go to Aldad. He said, I watched a Washington State game. Badgers will need big improvement if they want to compete in next week's game, especially on defense. Yes. Uh, yeah. I am right there with you, my friend, and thank you for the comment. They have to tackle. Going back and looking at it, that's the biggest thing that that lines up with what I watched live. Excuse me. Right. When I watched it live, I said, I don't know about the pass rush and the tackling was terrible. I watched it again. I was like, I feel a tiny bit better about the pass rush. I still have questions there. The answers are not all in. I feel better after watching it a second time. But the tackling was just as bad on the rewatch. It was worse on the rewatch because all, all the Kamoi Latou stuff stood out live. But there were some pretty bad misses from Turner, from Petroisky, from Muma. Like they have to tackle. Cheney had a miss in the hole. Um, you, if you, if you go to Washington State and you tackle like that, you're losing. I, I guarantee it. You will lose that game. You will lose that game, and Cam Ward will put up 450 yards on you. So, I 100% agree, Al. They, they have to tackle better in that game. Let's see. Um, this one's from Playmaker. He says, "I'm not sure why I call blind optimism, but I feel less nervous about the defense this year than I did about them after the first game last year, despite pitching a shutout against Illinois State last year." He went on to say, um, "The issues are fixable. Well, a lot of the issues are fixable. So I think tackling is largely fixable, right? I, I've learned long ago after watching football for a long time in my life, some issues you see in the beginning of the year just never go away. You know what I mean? Like some, you keep hoping, oh, they're going to fix that, and then they just don't. I, I think, I think." Um, Week one, the tackling 
was a little off, partially because I think they were just a little too jazzed up, right? I think Kamoy Latou is flying around trying to make big highlight hits. I think some of that's fixable. I think they'll tackle better going forward, but I don't know if it's going to be a great tackling team, right? I don't know if you go from this to great tackling. So I do think there's some communication issues as well that are fixable. They had some issues with rub routes. Um, on the second touchdown to a tight end, there was some miscommunication. There was a rub route on the Alex Smith play that they gave up the big chunk. I think there's some miscommunication there that they'll clean up. So I do agree people, some of this will get cleaned up. Um, this is from uh, Bite Me. He said quarterbacks F plus, running backs a B. They were utilized in the passing game, but it really worked. Offense line C minus, receiver C. I don't know how you can give the running backs anything lower than an A in this game. I I I don't know. That that seems like a harsh grade, man. Quarterback F plus. I've seen much worse quarterbacking play. I get I didn't get more kind of good grade, but not an F. Offensive line C minus. They you don't run for 300 something yards, put up 500 yards and have a C minus offensive line game. I appreciate the comment by the way. I just disagree. I I don't think it's this harsh and the running back B grade to me is is way too low. Leroy James says no comment on CJ Getz. I didn't see it, ah, man. No comments, not a no. No comment is a great thing when you're a punter, when you're a cornerback, when you're a long snapper, when you're a referee. No comments, not a great thing when you're an outside edge rusher. And he didn't flash. And I went back and watched on film, and he didn't flash. So I know Leroy has expressed skepticism on the the CJ CJ gets improvement train. I don't think he had a great game. I didn't. I didn't see a lot of juice there. So I think Leroy might be right on that one. Um. This one is from Bo Dragon. He said, I watched Florida State last night, Colorado, and USC. The quarterback play from those teams was like God mode compared to Mertz. Or, I mean, Mordecai. <laughs> if they lose to Washington State, it's already time to look towards next season. Also, fire, Bo guard, fire, fire uh, great guard. Uh, that is from Bo Dragon. So, no, I don't think if they lose to Washington State, it's time to look towards next season. Because you can still do everything you want in the Big Ten. All right? Washington State's a huge game for a lot of reasons. It's not a conference game. I don't think you pull the plug on anything losing to Washington State. I think that's a panic move. But, yeah, like Mordecai has to play a lot better. If Mordecai has another bad game or doesn't play well or has struggles with turnovers again, I think you start the conversation. But I think it's too early. It's too early to talk about Locke. It's too early to go there. And we don't know. Listen, Locke hasn't – this backup quarterback syndrome strong. That dude isn't always better. Um, and for your fire guard comment <laughs> – it's, it's we're not there yet, Bo. We're really not there. Okay. Uh, with that said, on Wisconsin. Appreciate all y'all. We'll talk tomorrow.